Hi, I'm Tim Roy. I'm Rolla. And this is our Canon project. <laughs> Cannons, they started long ago in 1260 AD and have developed over many years. Cannons started out as just an iron pipe with one hole permanently closed off. In the other end, there would be an open hole big enough to fit a cannon ball through. On the other end would be a mix of potassium nitrate, charcoal powder, and sulfur powder. This was a very fine mix that took hours to make. There is a container of gunpowder that is placed at the end of the barrel. There is a tilted opening that leads to the gunpowder. In front of the gunpowder is a wad and then the cannon ball. You then stuff in another wad using a rammer. After using the rammer, stuff in the cannonball. You then use a pricker, which is something that lights the gunpowder, and it sets it on fire, and the pricker goes through the teeny hole, teeny tilted opening we talked about earlier. There are four types of cannons. There are howitzers, guns, rifles, and mortars. Uh, howitzers are short guns used for firing shells with high trajectories and at low velocity. Then we have gun cannons which are generally used on ships and they were shot at low angles and high velocity. Rifles were basic cannons except they had a grooved and spiraled bar barrel to cause the cannon to kind of spin. Then we have a mortar cannon which are little squat cannons very stocky, they can be very big too, um, and they are shot at a very high trajectory. This concludes um, the make and types of cannons. But the wealth of information continues with Alexa. Hi, I'm Alexa, and I'm here to talk to you about civilizations and cannons from the medieval time. One of the more popular early civilizations known are the ancient Egyptians. Their weapon of choice was a bow and arrow, as it gave them the opportunity to hunt from far away. They would oftentimes ride a horse to give them speed while hunting. During the medieval times, much heavier artillery was used. Cannons began to be made as well as guns. One of these destroyers to be made was known as the Basilic. The Basilic was a massive cannon measuring 27 feet long and 2.5 feet in diameter with a 745 caliber. It was made by Ehrman with the help of the Ottoman Empire. It had a one mile range with a 1200 pound cannonball. It was used to take down the walls of Constantinople in the year of 1453. This size of cannon opened up inspiration for other artillery to be made. And that concludes a portion of early civilizations and medieval cannons. Today I'm going to talk about a cannon that was used in the medieval period through the 1800s. That cannon is the Falconet. This cannon was developed in the late 15th century and then was later used in the 17th century, mounted on boats for naval warfare. The falconet resembled an oversized matchlock musket with two wheels attached to improve mobility. The falconet is described to fire small yet lethal shots. The cannon was made with a long and slim barrel designed to shoot up to 5,000 feet with a 2 inch caliber. The falconet was generally 3 feet long, 500 pounds, and could fire 1 pound shots. The falconet was also known to be the American Revolutionary War as they were distributed and used by both the colonists and the British. They were a huge military advancement at the time because they were lighter and cheaper than most other cannons. They were also multi-purposeful as they could be used both on land and at sea. Next up, I will talk about a post-Renaissance civilization and how their military forces use weaponry to advance a civilization or protect it in times of upheaval or war. The post-Renaissance civilization that I chose was France. France at the time was well known for artillery and the use of cannons. The use of cannons. In fact, the French faced off the English in a battle known as Siege of Orleans, which started in 1428. It was the start of an artillery bombardment by the French in which missile fire was used to hold back the advance of the enemy and slow down the English assaults. One type of cannon was used by the French was the culverin cannon, which was used to bombard targets from a distance. They started off as hand culverins or hand bombards, which then led up to a new advanced version of the culverin that was more cannon-like. Weaponry like this helped the post-Renaissance civilization of France gain a stronghold over its enemies in the countless battles such as the Battle of Castellan in 1453 when a group of French cannons decimated the English army. Even Joanne of Arc used a cannon effectively during the war campaign in 1429. Cannons not only advanced the French military, they also advanced the military ar architecture because they led to the development of lower, thicker walls in order to better resist attacks on cannons. Hey, I'm Joanne. And now we focus on cannons 
that are from the 1900s to the present. These cans have different types and two examples are the mortars and howitzers. These type of cans have their own unique characteristic and are better than cans used in the past. One example of these cans from the 1900s are the M198 howitzer. The caliber of these howitzers are 155mm of artillery piece and requires 9 men to operate normally. This house was produced in the 1978 to 1992 and was used in the Gulf War, weighs about 16,000 pounds and was developed in the United States. The United States had the history with a lot of war and use and war development was important. Because of the war, we have to develop new new weapon technologies and better suit the environments and necessities for war. For an example, the US had can had muskets and cans in the Civil War and the Revolutionary War and, and, and to weapons like bombs, planes, tanks and machine guns in World War II and World War II. Today, the United States are still developing new weapon, weapon technologies and better suit the environment and necessities for war. I wanna strip myself